go. All right, all right. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> it is our once a month magical mystery beadbox create a thon. And we've got three amazing designers here and myself. Hi, I'm Sarah James from jessejamesbeads.com. We have to my right the incredible Gem Hawks of Gems Gem Box. Mm. You're posting for duty. <laughs> Hello, down here, we've got Stephanie Reese from Maureen Bradley Designs. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you, thank you. Hello, hello. And right down here in the kitty corner. Somewhere. <laughs> the other kitty corner. It's Susie Gizzen from Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio. Welcome, ladies. Yay. Hey. <laughs> thank you. It is a real treat to get together like we do once a month. We What we do at Jesse James Beads is once a month, we come on together on this really fun broadcasting sort of platform to unbox and take a look at the monthly Magical Mystery Bead Box and then turn it over to our designers who change every single month here on the spectrum and have them design on the fly, create, conversate, just hang out for an hour's worth of time. So I was saying to these three just before we came live here that I feel like the lucky one to get to hang out with such cool and creative women. And aren't we all so very lucky to be able to like be in the room where it happens with y'all. <laughs> Bless you. It's always a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Jim. So <laughs> let's just go around the horn while people are coming in. I know it's always like a little like when we do these broadcasts <laughs> on the screen, it's like, okay, who talks next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, Jeff, start us off. Tell us, where are you coming in from? Um, tell us a little something that's going on in your world, and we'll go around the, the, round the, round the wheel, and then we'll start creating. <laughs> Awesome. If we've not met before, my name is Jem. I'm coming to you from the United Kingdom, where I was born and raised. I come from uh, Stratford-upon-Avon, Shakespeare's homeland, and I primarily oh make jewellery with wire. It's an absolute honour and a pleasure and a treat as ever to work with Jesse James Beats. We have got an absolutely stunning box, which the gorgeous Trisha is going to woof for you in just a moment, by which I mean unbox, not actually woof. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Trisha. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, my name is Trisha Guyzon. I actually live in Pennsylvania in a little tiny town. Um, my favorite jewelry to make is usually um, as different as possible, but I like to use fibers and laces and um flowers and just all kinds of anything I can get my hands on that's tactical kind of. I like to do asymmetry a lot, um, just like different stuff. Um, I've been with Jesse James Beads as an ambassador for quite a few years now, and I love it. And we have so much fun. So that's about it. <laughs> that's, amazing. that's amazing. Thank you so much, Trisha. Thank you. Stephanie, Stephanie has been Stephanie has been an ambassador from Jesse James Beads for a while. This is our first time doing a live broadcast together, so I'd like to welcome Miss Stephanie. Stephanie, Thank tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. So I'm Stephanie Reese, and um, the business I have is Maureen Bradley Designs. And um, I am currently living in North Carolina, which I hope is my forever home now because it's very exhausting moving. <laughs> Um, but I hope it is. I'm originally from um, Kansas, and then I lived most of my life in San Antonio, Texas. Um, so I love the culture there and just the everything about San Antonio. Um, but, you know, life changes and you move. So now I'm here in North Carolina. And I guess one of my favorite designs um, to make is I love eclectic jewelry and I love um, whimsical. So I'm really excited about this box that you're getting ready to see. And um, I'm just excited to make something with all through all of you. That is wonderful. And I love that we can all get together, whether you have the Magical Mystery Beatbox from November at home, you can draw <clears throat> up a little bit of inspiration from our creative hour that we are about to have right here. Or if you're not yet a subscriber, we have a few of these boxes left online mm -hmm. and they're so stinking cute. I just 
I just love it. And I think that we should might as well just get on into this thing <laughs> right now. There leaves us more time for creating and chatting. <laughs> and I am going to ask Miss Trish. Trisha, would you do us the honor of unboxing <laughs> this box for us? Absolutely. Today? I'd be happy yeah. to. Okay, great. Let me get my camera turned around here and we'll be in business. Just takes a moment. <clears throat> this is so exciting. <laughs> that little wheel turning makes me nervous always. I don't know if you <laughs> see that, but <laughs> makes I, me I don't. there we are. There we I'm go. always like, are you gonna work this time? <laughs> So this is for anyone that's tuning in that doesn't yet know the Magical Mystery Bead Box. We do a monthly box, themed subscription box, and it's always a surprise to our subscribers. Um, each box has a theme, and I'll let Trisha go through the box and show you the art card and okay. get all these beads. Sounds great, guys. Let's get into it here. So this month we have an absolutely fabulous box we're doing sugar and spice is the theme for this month and look at that art card it's so gorgeous i love it just love it i just think these are done so well and i always mention these when i do my unboxings on my youtube channel how gorgeous they are i don't know who does them for you but kudos to them wow. um and then on the back it's really cute it says recipe and then from the kitchen of jesse james beads so it's so so adorable has jjb information here so you can stay connected to them and then it tells you what's inside which is really awesome it also is all labeled very well as well so let me sit this over here and we'll go ahead and dig in so let's see we're going to start with some beautiful small mixes and this was something i was really excited to see in this box this time it's you know they do have jesse james beads does have some really cool small beads just but just to see them all in one place is kind of fun gives me some other fun ideas that I can do. So this one's called saffron and they're all kind of based on food. So obviously, cause it's, you know, sugar and spice and the recipe card. So this is saffron. And as you can see in saffron, there's some gorgeous, gorgeous colors. You have the dark, almost cocoa colors and the red. And of course, as always, they like to include your metal that you need for your projects, which is super awesome. So that's saffron. <clears throat> and then we have ginger and that one is just perfect it just is ginger through and through isn't it and then they have the beautiful gold accents in there to go with it and there's cube beads and some gorgeous uh, rondelles and different kind of crystals in there just cannot wait to dig into that and then we have cardamom which has the gorgeous greens in there and some um more like earth tone colors some silver spacers and bead caps just gorgeousness that just makes me want to design right now so yay. here what's that i said yay 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 i love it it's gorgeous <laughs> i love the ab too i love the ab treatments on the beads and then we have cloves, which does that not look like a jar of cloves or what, guys? It really does. That looks like <laughs> absolute intention. When I saw that, I'm like, really? That looks <laughs> just like exactly like cloves. But you can see there's some really pretty uh, rondel or um, rondelles in here with crystals on them for spacers or metal rondelles. And you just have that earthy brownish black color that you see in cloves, just super gorgeous. And then my favorite of the tubes is the Himalayan salt, as everyone might guess, because <laughs> we have our gorgeous pink color in there and the silver accents. You have some opaque, opaque beads and some clear beads, just some gorgeous crystals. And I, I am definitely digging into that one today. And then this is sort of fun, guys. We have a sprinkles. And these are so super cute. I don't know if this is taped or not but probably but this has the gorgeous lamp work beads in them or excuse me this is the um millifiori glass I apologize but oh, super gorgeous super gorgeous accents right there and then we got this um beautiful mix and, me and measure uh metal piece 
metal pieces that has your spacers and metal beads and bead caps just some really gorgeous stuff to accent all of your beautiful beads and then guys i saved these to last because they are just over the top fantastic these this you got two strands in this box here this time and this is sugar cookies and i believe there was a variation some folks got different ones um, but this is the one that I, one of the ones I got is sugar cookies and look at those lamp work beads on there, guys. Can you even stand it? I mean, <laughs> it is killing me. They are so gorgeous. So gorgeous. And the colors are so bright and cheerful and just make you want to make some beautiful jewelry with that. And then the next, the last one that I got is a Christmas cupcakes. And this is number one. <clears throat> And I think it speaks for itself. <laughs> I mean, it's just gorgeous. You have some more lamp work beads. You have the rondelles, some crystal beads. Just plain holiday on a strand, basically. So that it. is our beautiful box this time. I'm super excited. I love it. All right, guys. So we just unboxed magical mystery bead box for the month of november i just popped a link into the comments if you want some more info on that but right now we are here to do a little design on the fly this is the mm -hmm. jesse james beads magical mystery bead box monthly create-a-thon with gem hawks stephanie reese and trisha geisen i am going to pop myself out of the frame here and allow us to get a little bit of spotlight on some of our designers and see where they're headed, where their minds are taking them with these designs. Um, Jem, let's take a look over here and go on down to your mat. Ladies, feel free to get your beading supplies out. This uh, next 45 minutes to an hour is all you. Excellent. Well, welcome to Jesse James Bead's November Magical Bead Box, Magical Mystery Bead Box. It's such a mouthful, forgive me. Oh. I just wanted to draw your attention to the alternative strand. Um, Trisha, I think, had Xmas Cupcakes number one. This is the number two with those beautiful little trees on. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to show you that before I started catastrophically messing around with the display on my board. I'm feeling ginger today so i think that's where i'm going to start what about you guys where are you going trish is going for the himalayan pink maybe oh yes that's i know that's a shock and <laughs> the cardamom well, I, and the clothes i'm going to be working with wire which is not a surprise to be fair uh, these are really 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 well put together by the way <laughs> so beautiful I'm very glad you guys like them this is our first time putting beads in tubes and i just I just think they're so great. <laughs> it's fantastic. And yeah, let me like tell it. you, every time I have one of these in all the multiple sizes that comes through, you better believe I keep it for displaying and for storing all kinds of things. So I'm definitely feeling that I'm going to be working with ginger. I've got a big old ginger root in my fridge at the moment, and it's <laughs> destined to make a little bit of a chesty tincture for me for the rest of the week. Let's have a look. This is not the colour that I normally work with. I am normally drawn to cloves and cardamom and that insane saffron blend. I have to say that's probably my favourite one, followed closely by the cardamom and the cloves. And I think I'm going to grab myself some 18-gauge round wire in a medium temper. I've got about a foot there, and I think I'm going to make myself... Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll start making it and you can see if you're going to guess what it will be before I get there. So what do you reckon? Any surprises yet? Any thoughts? <laughs> Something with wire for darn sure. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> going to make a, a ginger root? Uh, it's going to be slightly more formed than a ginger root because i could probably pull one of those out of my scrap pot to be fair <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty random those things so i think i'm going to use some bail makers to get some evenness on that any ideas yet what we could be going for a heart it's not a heart but it'll come it'll happen i love working with the monthly subscription boxes because it takes you somewhere that maybe you didn't think you would go and we've had a couple this year here at jesse james which have 
really being so far up my street, especially the Van Gogh boxes. I'm a huge lover. I'm not going to pronounce the name as it is pronounced in Holland because it can sound a little bit X-rated when I do it. So we're just going to go with Van Gogh and leave it at that. But if you want your own um, private Gem Hawks pronounces it as per tradition, well, let me know and I'll t tell you later. <laughs> Any guesses yet? No. Sarah and I were just talking Tom before Tom. coming to air about what you can make with 18 and 26 gauge wire. And I say almost anything. I think you can make almost anything. So I'm going to keep going for a little bit longer and then you can tell me if it's starting to make sense yet. What's your favourite box beam this year? Is that a question to me? It's a question to <laughs> literally anybody who's still Woo! listening to me. Okay, I'm going last. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard one, but I liked, um, what was the last one that had the butterflies, all the butterflies and the lunar? The oh, lunar. yeah, the sun and moon. Uh, oh, yes. The autumn, autumn one. flight, I want to say. Yes, that was autumn probably flight, one of my favorites for sure. Stunning. Oh. Stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I think I loved um was it called Turquoise Skies? I want to say when, that was earlier maybe it was like May. I really loved all the turquoise and wood that was in that box. It was oh, so much fun to design with. That was Yellowstone. Oh, Yellowstone. That was a great box. I enjoyed that one. So I beautiful. Love. Yes. Um, and I am going to note this right now for anyone that, well, hopefully we're going to be able to replay this video on Facebook, but somehow for some reason, Facebook just shut us down and we're on YouTube only right now. Oh, okay. I know. Oh, no. A little bit rude. I do. I know. <sighs> Um, I just popped over here to Stephanie's camera to take a look at what's going on here. It looks like, Stephanie, you've broken into one of your strands. And what else are you working on here? So I have been waiting to break open um, the sugar cookie strand. Oh, I love these lampwork beads. They are so fabulous. So um, I was thinking um, of mixing the colors of the beads with these and I wanted to make three different necklaces with them so I'm just starting with the blue because I love the blue and I took the large hole um crystal these look like um I guess it looks like like maybe polymer clay where they push the crystals inside of them is that what they do yes. the process with them um so I grabbed those I um I loved how they um paired beautifully with the blue and the pink and then I'm so in love with the sprinkle mix. So I pulled some of these spirals out. So I'm adding those. And then I'm just adding, um, I'm adding the little tiny beads with the spirals so that I can make little clusters. Um, and I think I'm just going to make, um, add them with some chain. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on. I love the little sprinkle set too. And I'm really glad you all liked that one. We were, we were, um, we went back and forth on adding those little sprinkles in, but they really are just so darn cute. Oh, I love Millifiori, Millifiori beads, I guess they're called. Yeah. Everything so. is better with sprinkles. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Jen, I think I've come, I've was been looking down at your small camera here, and I think I know what it is that you could be making. Yes, there he is. It's a sweet little gingy. Gingerbread. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Avonda had it right. She guessed. She got us. <laughs> it's a gingerbread. A gingerbread. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is so cute. And I think... Marvel maybe he deserves some sprinkles, yeah? Mm -hmm. As well as some ginger. Definitely. I think maybe he will end up with some sprinkles too. Oh, oh I love it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is a colour pop in and of itself. Look at that. Fuchsia and tangerine. 
Oh, wow. yeah, it is. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's kind of bleached on my desk. I've kind of taken the light out of it slightly, but those colours, wow, that's delicious. <laughs> that's super duper. Oh my gosh. What a, it's a nice little surprise, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I do like it when you open a box and you think, I know what's going on here. And, and you think, yes, this is what's going on here. And then bam, <laughs> you get something that makes you think even harder. How am I going to use those? How am I going to integrate this into a design? See, I love a designer challenge. And to receive something that you know you're going to be working with, but there's maybe something in there that you wouldn't have considered yourself. I love that. I love a little bit of a designer challenge and those are being added in somewhere, somehow. I haven't decided how just yet, but we will get there. So fun. There we go. Honestly, you can make almost anything with wire. And especially if you've got your key gauges, I tend to work with 18 and 26. And I think you, you can generally make most things. Yeah. And to anyone that's tuning in right now, Jam can be found over at the Jesse James Beads page on Facebook every Thursday at 1 p.m. And also Jem has a fantastic YouTube channel, Jem's Gem Box. I'm going to just put it in here for you so y'all can find it. But Jem, <laughs> yours just so inspiring to watch. Thank um, you. And it's a, we're, we're really delighted to be able to, to have you show us the way wire can work and be manipulated and just, you know, do do a, a pretty, pretty much anything, like you said, every you Thursday. absolutely can. It's not very comfortable to wear as clothing. I'll give you that, but, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you, though. I'm sure Jen, <laughs> it's been done, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have our little gingerbread guy. Anybody want to give him a name that is cool with me? Oh. I still like gem. He's a gem gingerbread. Gem gingerbread. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not convinced I'm going to be able to pronounce that correctly. But okay, no. we'll, okay we'll, we'll we'll have his name be as it's he's he's a, a work in progress on the name. He's a work in progress. That makes sense. Oh my gosh! We'll pop down here to Trisha. See what Trisha is getting on. Oh, Becky suggests Gerald. By the way, Jen. Oh, I love it, Gerald. Gerald. <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> What's going well, on over here, Trish? Um, well, I decided to use, I had some um, beautiful sari silk on hand here. And I cut a piece of memory wire with three loops. And I'm wrapping the um, sari silk around the memory wire and also wrapping my wire and beads around that as well. Just to give it kind of a softer look with the sari silk you know i have a tendency to want to use just the pink himalayan salt on this but i'm gonna have to make myself try some other colors <laughs> on here <laughs> because there's so many beautiful ones i you know i just want to go monochromatic and very romantic uh with the pink but we're gonna put some pops of some other mixes as well so i'm just wrapping that as i go i'm wrapping that sari silk around and then as I'm going, I'm wrapping my wire and then picking up another bead. And we'll pick one out of this mix because we need to share the love. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just placing that on that memory wire, just holding it there with my thumb and then bringing my wire around and wrapping it over top of the memory wire and the sari silk. Okay, and it just kind of gives you that um, really pretty, like I said, romantic look when you have the fibers underneath it. I, I really tend to go for that when I'm making things just to soften oh, them, you know. How beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so that's what's going on over in my department. Looks fabulous. I love the the difference that you're getting with the silk, with the ultra shine of the beads. Yes. Really delicious counterpoint. Yes, I'm always about, um, that's kind of how my house is decorated and that's kind of how I make jewelry. I like it to be um, fancy, but shabby chic, but you know, some unexpected, I guess is a good way to, to describe it. 
I like it to be unexpected and different textures and tones and things that you wouldn't normally put together, I like to put together. So there we go. And that's all there is to it. We're just picking up a bead. I'm just taking the end of my wire and just using it just like a needle almost. And I'm going to put in pops of this uh, clove mix as well. I can't, these um, gorgeous AB um, looks like fire polish to me. I believe so. Um, we'll just put a really cool, unique pop on this, I think. And we're just going to bend that back. And lay it over top of the sorry silk and the wire and then just wrap. It's no. so neat to see how you how the three of you put things together. Oh my gosh, look at them go, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a it really truly is like a create-a-thon, just seeing what three designers do with the same dash of beads to work with with mm -hmm. the game sure. from a mystery bead box. Oh, I love it. Oh my and gosh. what's great is our extended Jesse James Beads family gets to experience that too. You're you're a designer also in your own places yeah. and you're bringing your aspect, your design and your own unique feel to the box as well. And we really, really love to see your designs. I don't know what the tags are. Sarah will have to tell you what the tags are, but getting to see that on Instagram and all over social media, it's a real pleasure, really beautiful to, to see all that come together from all those different designers out there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I'm gonna put the tag here in the comments so you guys can see. It's just mag magical mystery bead box. And I don't know if you noticed, <laughs> Um, and I'm wearing my Magical Mystery Tour shirt today. <laughs> nice. We came up with the Magical Mystery bead box. Oh, gosh. What was it? Like, um, holy strombolies. It must have been three years. Wow. Maybe. And we thought, like, it was the first name. Like, there was no other consideration of what are we going to call this box. It was always like, oh, let's call it the Magical Mystery bead box. It's, just like, it's magical. It's mysterious because it's a surprise. There's beads in it. It comes in a box. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Definitely. No other name. <laughs> Better than the crazy bead envelope. Yeah. Ben, that, that looks amazing. I love what you're doing with the beads. Look at that. The feet have little beads in them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. They're kind of cute. They look like little icing swirls. Yeah. They do. <laughs> and I think that gingerbread Gerald should have icing swirls. <laughs> you know? Gingerbread Gerald. <laughs> he deserves them. He deserves them. That is fabulous. Swirls. <laughs> So this is the tricky part with wire. I don't plan. I don't plan anything. So how many beads are going to fit in the gap? And a way that you can overcome issues. Let's find a twin for that beautiful cube. If you decide that you really like the look of the beads that you've popped onto your wire and you're designing on the fly because like me, you didn't plan it. Well, I mean, that actually happens to work reasonably well. I'm happy with that number. But if you weren't, you can always make Gerald a little bit wider, a little bit narrower. That's the beauty of wire. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. So adorable. <laughs> now, Stephanie over here, this is, I see a very colorful display. Yes. So I am making these little clusters of beads with some silver wire. And then um, <clears throat> I want to come in with either, I'm thinking about adding some cut chain. And then I also have this from just James Beads. So I'm sort of, I love how the, this chain brings in some of the darker tones that I'm okay. adding. So um, I may have to do both. <laughs> I do love a bit of Jesse James Bead's cup chain. I mean, yeah. wow. Yes. Oh, well, thanks, guys. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's so amazing to see what y'all can come up with 
with just like, I mean, the beads, the beads are like the main act. They're beautiful. They catch your eye. But we love working with our friends like at Beadalon and at Softlex. We get chain from all around the world, really. And it's so nice to have these extra components to really let the beads be able to sing their song. And you you girls are, you know, you're the professionals here. You're so, <laughs> so good at putting um, and making the beads come together with the wire and sorry silk and whatnot. Bless you. Thank you. Yeah. You guys are so good at putting strands together and collections mm -hmm. so when i open up a bead box uh, there was one i was working with last week that i kept calling chinese takeaway but it's actually chinese takeout <laughs> chinese takeaway. <laughs> we, we call them takeaways here so i just naturally called it that so many apologies if i called it the wrong thing and you were all sat there thinking well where the heck is that i cannot find it <laughs> um, it's because i made it up it is not a thing anyway Every single bead in that box matches and works or counterpoints every other single component of the box. And that's why I will come back to Jesse James beads time and time again. You could take any two of those and slam them together and mm -hmm. it's going to be gorgeous. It doesn't matter what you end up working with. You could close your eyes and pick your components and it would be beautiful. Beautiful, yes. I agree with that. I'm that that means so much. That means so much as um, you know, as a I don't even know what to call it, like as the magical mystery bee box mogul to know that these beads that we're putting together are so inspiring to our designers. Like to receive something on your doorstep in the mail every month. I mean, I know what's going to be in here when it comes on my doorstep. So it's not really a surprise mm -hmm. to me, but I know what it's like getting a surprise in the mail. Like we do BarkBox for, for Axel Rose. Oh, yeah. Golden Retriever. <laughs> and it's like, ee, when it's BarkBox day. And like, <laughs> can totally imagine. Right? I hope you're doing like chasing your tail and like, don't get <laughs> out when your magic is on your doorstep. Uh oh, we're talking about chasing tail now? What's going on? <laughs> See, I have a Jack Russell. Whatever came through the door would be destroyed. <laughs> Including the box and the mail most of the time. <laughs> yeah, one of mine's in here sleeping with me, my 14-year-old girl. She's uh -oh. uh, What's her name? Her name's Kaylee. Aww. Um, Give her stretches from me. Yes, I will. We actually have two standard poodles. Uh -huh. uh, Kaylee Are either is... of them pink? What's that? Are either of them pink? No, but my white one could be if I dyed her, but <laughs> my husband might have other things to say about that, though. <laughs> might not get the approval, no? No, I don't think I would. That's his play buddy, so he might not want his friends seeing him play with the pink poodle. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's a, that's really a little dog talk, but also it's also Trisha Geisen can be found here on YouTube with her channel, which is the Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio. So hence the questions about whether one of those poodles that Trisha has is, is pink because her business is pink poodle. I mean, hey, would it be a moment with myself if there was not a random question that made you like furrow your brow really hard? What is Jem talking about now? No, nobody actually knows ever. One of my favorite Jem isms because Jem has been when working with Jesse James Beats for I think a year and a half now, which has been an amazing, amazing journey, and we're so glad to have you here, with Jem. Thank you for having me. Jem had told me I think last year about her Jack Russell terrorizer. <laughs> terrorizer. <laughs> Yes, they have a reputation. <laughs> and I just He's a very a good boy, really, but he just can't control himself. <laughs> oh so we God. thought we would give him little collars. Maybe Gerald is fancy. Maybe they are. What are those things that guys put through their shirt sleeves? Cufflinks. Uh, tie tacks? Or, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, cufflinks, yes. He might need a tie tack, too, though, you know. I may well get one. Who knows? <laughs> Gerald could be very fancy. Maybe he's got a money clip. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
correct me up. Run, run, run. Oh, my gosh. Can, can't stop me. I'm Gerald the Gingerbread Man. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's like the guy in the top hat from Monopoly, right? Yeah. That's who I'm basing him on. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <You're> amazing. Uh. <laughs> so one of the other things that I love working with Wire most of all is that if things don't go quite to plan, and you do end up taking something apart or cutting the beads out, it's never wasted. What you're doing is you're learning your craft, you're practicing your art, and it's not going in the bin, it's going in the experience receptacle. Mm -hmm. So if it all Absolutely. goes a little bit yuck for you, don't ever fret, don't feel like you failed. What you've done is you've learnt, so just mm -hmm. keep going. Absolutely. I have very positive teaching, Jam. Yeah. I think that's those are some words that we could, those are the, some words that we can live by. <laughs> oh, for sure. I agree. I think I you, know, you have to be able to uh, take what you go through in your life as part of your own unique journey. You're getting to where you're going and your journey is unlike anybody else on the planet. Eight billion people and it's just you doing it your way. And if some days that means a bit of wire goes in the bin, then so mm -hmm. be it. <laughs> Absolutely. Here, here, yeah. <laughs> I love it when we get life lessons. We'll <laughs> Sorry, off topic. <laughs> no, so on topic. It's good. You know? <laughs> There's no no mistakes, only happy accidents. That's oh, right. I well, agree with yeah. that. The wire's not going into the scrap pot. It's going into the experience bin. The experience <laughs> bin. <laughs> and I think until you do that, um, you can't really learn. So sometimes oh, you've got to make those mistakes, right? Definitely. I do it all the time. I think making mistakes is, uh, it's well, it's part of it. Well, if we all just did everything perfectly, it would be pretty good, don't you think? Yes. Right. And the market would kind of... be so saturated as well. <laughs> and the market would be so saturated. <laughs> That's like one of my um, one of my favorite quotes from um, a league of their own is when Tom Hanks, you know, the football coach, says to Gina Davis, "Of course it's hard. If it was easy, everyone would do it." Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh -huh. Absolutely. You know, and that's like when you love something and you care about it, you you know, you put your your heart and your energy into it. Is this another film that I haven't seen that people are going to shout at me about? <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jemmy would love it. Yeah. Oh I love there's no crying in baseball. No crying in baseball. <laughs> You're crying. There's no crying. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a, it's a classic jam. I'll leave it there. <laughs> Such a good movie. I'd have to check it out. I, I've still not lived down the fact that I haven't seen Dirty Dancing yet. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> and the crowd. <laughs> A hush comes over the crowd. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> but my favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard, so there's that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that cracks me up so bad. <laughs> I actually, I haven't seen Die Hard in a really long time, and I want to. Oh, every Christmas, I have the box set yeah. now. <laughs> Uh, my favorite movie is Rudolph Christmas. <laughs> that sounds nice and wholesome, Trisha. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, that's me, wholesome, you know. <laughs> you know what? You know, speaking of um, wholesome Christmas movies, <laughs> we just watched Bad Mom's Christmas the other day. Oh, you I love yeah. that one. Oh, yes. Gosh. I haven't it's seen so that fun. yet. It's hysterical. It's so funny. Oh, my gosh. You mm -hmm. have to. Everyone do yourself a favor. Bad Mom. <laughs> <laughs> it is silly. <laughs> we watched Holiday, which I thought was funny too. With um, oh my gosh, um, she was in um, she's all grown up now, but she was in um, what is it? Ho pet pet hotels for pets. I think it was called Hotel for Dogs. Emma. <laughs> I feel like I would like that one, Hotel for Dog. Yeah, oh, I love that one. Any dog movies here? My uh, one dog, my 
our winner when Standard attacks the television. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, what? I feel you. Jack Russell does the same. Yeah. He's like a miniature exocet towards the TV unit. Yep. Wow. Yeah, if she sees any animal, really. <laughs> On the TV. <laughs> wow. Best she part looks. is when we're watching something with maybe Scooby Doo. When mm -hmm. Scooby Doo's standing up, he's a human and therefore not a threat, and Mojo ignores him. <laughs> when he drops to all fours and becomes a dog again, <laughs> he attacks yeah. the Teddy. Yeah. Just tries to take a chunk out of it. <laughs> I never said he was smart. I said he was brilliantly <laughs> gorgeous, but you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. Trisha, let's slip on back to you. Angel. Hey, Angel. Angel, say, <laughs> what are you doing? It looks amazing. Um, well, Angel, I am making a, um, I have memory wire here and wow. some story silk. And I am wire wrapping the, I'm using 24 gauge wire, not Jem's favorite 26, but <laughs> you could use 26. And I am wire wrapping the beads and the sari silk onto the memory wire. This is a kind of project that it's not too hard once you get the rhythm of it, um, but it makes a big impact. It, it kind of looks harder than it is, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It makes, you know, these kind of things, um, are fun to do as well because they're not as brain, they aren't as brain taxing, if you know what I mean. But <laughs> this makes it, you know, I just really think they make a good impact on um, something simple, you know. So, well, which yeah. Did you end up going with Trish? Which what? Which colors did you end up, which tools did you choose? I'm using the Himalayan salt the cardamom and the clove now i'm just putting uh pops of the cardamom and the clove into it and just kind of instead of all pink which is what my gut told me to do um <laughs> <laughs> i put some pops in and i do really like the pops of the other colors on there it just sort of gives it life i think you know so yeah it's just as simple as um, I have, I know it looks like a bit of a, of a cluster here, but that's kind of how it looks when you're working with everything at once, but I'm just taking and I'm wrapping that sorry silk around. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I have my wire here, which I'm going to need to add some more wire soon. And then you just, and you're going to get strings and stuff. Don't get too worked up about it. You can trim them after, um, <clears throat> And then I'm going to pick up, I think it's time for another beautiful black AB bead. So I'm just going to put that on. I like that you added in. I, I was, when you were first saying that you wanted, you were going to stray from the monochromatic and that was going to be difficult for me, for you. <laughs> I, I was like here behind my camera screen thinking the same thing. Cause I liked it being all pink too. Yeah. But now that you've added these other colors in, I think it looks so good, Trey. Yeah, it's crazy go. how that, that really just put a pop into it. And I, I, I like it too. I'm happy I did that. That's a learning experience right there. That's so. beautiful. And then I'm just wrapping that around, just simply. It's now, when I go to add some wire, which I'm going to be doing here in a moment, I'm going to just... I'm going to leave a little bit of tail on this and then I'll trim it and, and push it down in so it doesn't jag anybody. Uh -huh. But I'm basically going to come in here and which we can do that right now, actually, because I have a piece cut. Sounds good. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to, because for me personally, when I'm doing this, I don't like to have a gargantuan piece of wire. You know, it's just much harder to work with on projects like this because you're, you're finding the loops, you're finding the sorry silk already, you know, so... Um, I'm just going to lay my other wire down here across. I know it's hard because my thumbs are in the way, but, um, and you can see it coming up right beside that other wire. And I'm just going to hold it there with my thumb and I'm going to pull that wire through and I'm just going to wrap it around like two times. And as I'm doing that, you can see I'm kind of taking this finger and pushing back those other loops just so they're not in my way as I'm wrapping. And you're going to really make sure and do that when you're putting your beads on and, and things like that too. It just makes it a little easier. So now that I have my two wraps around, 
I can go ahead and add another bead. I'm ready to, we just put on another piece of wire and then we'll cut these at the end and, you know, incorporate them down into the, to the bracelet. And then it's just as simple as picking up another bead and continuing. <laughs> Woo, that one. So funny if a bead flew from Trisha's desk and just landed here on Stephanie's. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Send it here. Send it back. There you go. Got it. <laughs> That's like my dream of having like Jesse James Bead's Wonka vision one day. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> like, like, like TV from like, hey, Oh I'm my god. A jump ring from somebody. <laughs> yeah, I know. For the magical mystery bead box too, right through your computer screen. So if you want one, you'd be like, I gotta have that now. <laughs> yeah, just reach in and get it. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah, I was watching that movie yesterday. That's really? hilarious. Yes, that's hilarious that you oh mentioned it. <laughs> yep. Wow. So, Stephanie, are we doing like little links here? Can you hold one up to the camera so we can see? Yes, it? sure. So, I've added Ooh. my little cup chain. Yes. To my focal here. I made a little focal. Mm -hmm. I love it. So and cute. then I added the cup chain. There's a, a black bead from the clove. Mm -hmm. And then a, a crystal link. And then another little cluster with the spiral, the Millefiori spiral right. with two of the um, cardamom. These tiny little beads are in the cardamom. And then this is in saffron. I love this red bead right here. It's beautiful. And then um, two little black beads with the Millefiori um spiral and then another little uh crystal uh, link crystal link so, so i'm just cool. working the other side beautiful it's gonna turn out so good i can't mm -hmm. wait to see the finished product of this one mm -hmm. and is that going to be a necklace stephanie yes That's i really kind of thought maybe i would do a necklace with the red and the green as well oh yeah that'd be pretty i know i like how yeah. um the size of it it's so feminine I think with the smaller beads on it, you know? Yes. I love all these tiny little beads. They're so fabulous. Yeah. Really playful stuff. I, I'm, I'm yeah. loving it. Let's see. Oh. I got that oh, one. Cute. Let's come on over here and take a look at this gem. <laughs> Hola, como esta? Oh, <laughs> como estas, Gerald? <laughs> <laughs> Gerald's got quite a big smile to him. I hope that's okay. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, he that looks is. fabulous. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Those little beads are just fantastic. Here I thought about beads. maybe giving him some pink in his eyes, but maybe that would be a step too far. So I was wondering if he should have a blue and a red or Ooh. maybe hearts for eyes. Oh, what hearts for eyes, definitely. <laughs> Hearts for eyes, yeah. Hearts for eyes, it is, my friends. So cute. <laughs> it's and the what... same basic technique. We've made a form, and we've made a form in the heavier wire, mm -hmm. and then we're just using the lighter wire. You could use the wire that Trish is using, the 24 gauge. Works in exactly the same way. Um, I tend to use 26 because it's really fluid. Certainly when you're adding a bead to the mix as Trish is, you will want that extra strength. And I think if this was going to be something that you would wear rather than use as a decoration, you might even consider upping your game and using the 24 gauge too. So I don't know. Do I need to put a nose on him? I don't think they have noses really, do they? But <laughs> you might just put some gingerbread color in there and be done with it. <laughs> there you go. It's Maybe. very much a build as you go kind of gingerbread cat. Maybe they don't have noses because if they did, they would smell themselves baking in the oven and it would <laughs> make them. Like wow. That is some dark, dark thoughts. That's gingerbread psychology 101. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I won't be making any gingerbread cookies this year. <laughs> no, I think I've just decided against it. <laughs> I like the evil witch with the house is baking gingerbread. Oh my gosh. I think we're going to go for some of the hot ginger on his face, make it look like he's blushing slightly. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. 
There it is. <laughs> Jim, are you using 20 gauge wire for your gingerbread? The frame is 18 gauge. 18 gauge. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you could, Fabulous. if you really wanted to, you could do that in the slightly lighter wire. Certainly if you're newer to wire and you wanted to kind of get a grip with it. Um, but I, okay. I, I kind of like the the heaviness straight away you could also um very gently hammer everywhere apart from where the wire is twisted at the top there if you wanted to use 20 gauge and then um just have it hammered instead so that you add a little bit of strength but because you're putting a little bit of pressure side to side on it it's kind of better to have that extra uh, the extra strength to it i see wow uh, let's put one of these in the middle i think you can always take them off. That's the joy of it. You know, stick one on, see if it fits. And if there's too much or too little, you can always go again and see what looks best. I know um, I'm not the world's biggest user of seed beads. It's well known. <laughs> because I tend to not really be able to see the, the holes in them. But I must say that working with these smaller beads is a real treat today. And I'm really, really delighted with all of the potential color combinations in the box. It's so fun seeing what you girls come up with. <laughs> it's silly. I love him. When you are working yeah. with wire, you do kind of need to look to make sure that you're cutting the right piece, though. It's really sad if you cut the whole frame and, you, and you've already kind of wired everything into position. So just bear that in mind, my little lovelies. Very true statement. <laughs> Been there, done. I've that. done that before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. where I yeah. clipped it, and it's like, oh, and that was not the wire I wanted to. That clip. was not what I was intending. Yes, and then you're starting <laughs> all over. <laughs> Again, we put it in the uh, the learning zone. <laughs> the four-letter word experience bin. That's right. Our experience yeah, bin. Yes, the experience bin. <laughs> So you can see, guys, here I went back in and I, I went, um, once I incorporated my uh, wire, my second wire there, I left it long for a little while until I got some of this done because I don't want it to be spinning um, on the um, memory wire uh, while I'm trying to put beads on and stuff. So leaving that little tail it gives you something sort of to hold on to while you're putting on few your beads and once that's done then you're good to go to cut your wires then and and press them down in okay that makes sense makes yeah. sense everywhere that you make your life just that little bit easier mm -hmm. the more you enjoy the process the more likely you are to do it again absolutely mm -hmm. i love the concept trish that you have here about wire wrapping fiber and beads on the outside of the memory wire it's really that's beautiful so fun. but like especially when considering making a gift for somebody you know mm -hmm. it, bracelets are such lovely things to gift but it's it's hard to know um what someone's size is going to be and memory wire really takes care of that exactly yeah it sure does mm -hmm. it makes it um really great for gift giving which that probably is what's going to happen to this one <laughs> This may go in someone's little a box this Nothing year. Like <laughs> it, that is um, a very nice match for what we have coming up on Thursday. Actually, Jem is live and mm. Meredith on the Beetle on and Jesse James Beats channel mm. for Thursday oh, from yeah. 1 to 3 p.m. We have a rose all day. Oh, my oh, oh, yeah. gift making party with, of course, rose gold. I've seen that and I'm drooling over it. <laughs> I saw wow. it. Yeah. So good. I just love like hanging out with like anytime I get to hang out with designers and watch y'all create jewelry. It's so inspiring. And I know I'm speaking for everyone that's watching just to see how designers take like either the same color palette, like Meredith and Jem will both be working with rose gold mm -hmm. or like the same box of beads. You three are working with the same magical mystery bead box from November but look how different and how unique each of the designs are. Like mm -hmm. that is cool to watch. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Really though. Like, okay, for instance, we've got here, um, we have got Stephanie 
with such a like whimsical and just like Christmas candy kind of necklace, I think. Like, you know what I remember? Yeah. Um, ribbon candy. Yes, absolutely. I was thinking candy too. It's playful. Yes. So cute. And a little asymmetrical too, huh? A little bit because um, I'm using the Millefiori in different colors. And so the way I'm pulling it in is by using, I'm using two of the black beads. I'm using the two crystals. And then I keep with the um, cardamom, the tiny cardamom beads, the red. And so that kind of ties it together when right. you want to use different beads. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it does. Because like that's the thing with asymmetry. And Trisha could probably speak to this too, because I know Trish, you love to do asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you need to have like some sort of like binding <laughs> element that makes yeah. the project look cohesive. And that's yes. what Stephanie's doing with those dark pops in here. Really cool. Yes, absolutely. That looks wonderful. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, and that is always the key. So it's still cohesive, but you know, you have that asymmetrical uh feel to it. And we're still we're coming along pretty well. We only have that much more to go. This is a three wrap. You could do, you know, one, two, depending on what um, you're wanting. But I'm go big or go home. That's my middle name, actually. So. <laughs> Look at that flash. It's just Isn't sparkling. Just, there's just so I'm many. watching what you guys are doing on my other phone. So I can see and um, see what you're doing. And it's just so sparkly. It is, and I'm, I'm in love. Beautiful. I don't know. Maybe this will stay in my collection. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Just depends. I know how to do that where they have a they have <sighs> intention to be giving the project away, but then as it comes to a close, like, yeah. I love it. It's like, nope, that's mine. And I do that way too often. I mean, that's if you would see my, my jewelry yeah. collection, oh, my. <laughs> Crazy. Oh my goodness, Gerald. How is Gerald the gym? <laughs> <laughs> well, his buttons are quite large, so I don't know if I'm going to change them for the Millefiore rather than the big icing swells. We're uh -huh. just going to see what these three look like. Right. And we can always change our mind because it's kind of hitting his chin. So they might be a little bit large just to go over the surface there. Well, maybe you could use two large ones and a small one or something in the middle, a smaller one. Oh, but... that would make my OCD go pop. Oh, would it? Okay. <laughs> okay. So I might go for these three instead. That works. <laughs> Those are matched with cufflinks. <laughs> I forgot about his cufflinks. <laughs> no, I think it look great. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we could go for red... Do I have an amber? Could I put one of those in? No, I can't do it. I simply cannot. We'll just go for these. <laughs> I tried, I tried really, really hard to do a non-symmetry thing, but it didn't happen. I'm sorry. Uh, well, some people can't, uh, they can't handle it. I, I can't. My my brain goes pop. <laughs> and my friends always made that's lovely what my friends say. They're always like in the past, yeah. but you'll find it's quite yeah. rare with me. I like to try and match things up. How does that look, ladies? What do you think? I think it looks <laughs> good. Looks good. That's better, I think. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that, the buttons. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. <clears throat> there we go. He's finished and dressed now. I think he's going to the opera. <laughs> Becky, Becky Ward says here in the comments, and Becky, I just have to thank you so much for playing along and getting silly with us here. <laughs> 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 like he says, it's always fun. A sophisticated gentleman like Gerald would have buttons that match his cufflinks. Oh <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> go to go. <laughs> Oh, wow. All these look so great. And do you see what I mean? Everyone's designs are so different. Ah, so <laughs> we did in this Magical Mystery bead box. Um, typically, all the boxes are exactly, exactly the same. This one, we had a three-strand slight variation with the one of the strands that was in it. This was 
Christmas cupcakes one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see like from far away they look all the same, but they are just like slight little variances on them. And they're cute. all so darn cute. Ugh. I kind of have a hard time choosing which one I like best, but y'all didn't even, <laughs> even, even break into your Christmas cupcakes. Or Stephanie, do you have some Christmas cupcakes open on yours? Um, I did not. Well, I have the sugar cookies open and I did not break open the Christmas cupcakes yet. Huh. And that's like, so we get this all the time that the strands are like, oh, they're just so perfect as they are. Mm -hmm. You don't do anything with them. But that, mm -hmm. that's when I say, hey, bust out your stretchy string, get your beetle on elasticity or the stretchy cord of your, of your favorite, your preference. And it's like, make a really great. Yes, yeah, exactly. Cupcake. All three of them are beautiful. Oh yeah, my that's God. what I'm thinking for Christmas. Make myself a a stretchy. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. I'm, now I'm like, where's my stretch cord? Maybe I should I to get my. <laughs> I'm like looking. <laughs> and I think that they also like they also look beautiful just as a focal too. Yes, so, absolutely. Oh, yeah. but, um, just strung like they are. Like that would be beautiful and it would be easy to add chain. I mean, I think yeah, definitely. it's such a beautiful strand. And you could even use some of the smaller ones and make like a three strander and really go big or go home. Right. With it. Oh, Do with the, the small tiny with the tiny the tiny beads and the jars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like make a three strander, one of the big use the larger strand and then do the smaller beads to make a three strander. Yes. You know, my brain always has some chain. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd be the bell of the ball at Christmas time. <laughs> I think this is destined to become earrings. I, I just cannot see that I want to do anything other than earrings with them. Yeah. They're just so <laughs> gorgeous. Now, it's simple to work as well. Is he heavy? Gerald? Yes, Gerald's heavy. <laughs> Gerald heavy. Gerald is heavy. Um, Gerald is fairly bead-tastic. I don't think he would be a great earring. No. But I think my Christmas cupcakes number two oh, is going yes. to be earrings. Oh, okay, sorry. I misunderstood. No, 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 not at all. I wouldn't expect you to be looking. Um, I just adore these little Christmas so trees. Cute. Yeah. And the fact oh, that you've got Alex them. supporting it as well. Definitely earrings for me. I'm going to make Gerald a cane so he can go to the opera. Don't mind me. <laughs> He He's will be so dapper life, with though. a cane. <laughs> um, well, okay. Becky was asking, will the other flavors of Christmas cupcakes um, be available for purchase? And I've been like muting and unmuting myself here. So sorry if I missed anything <laughs> very important in the conversation. But Becky, yes, we'll have the additional Christmas cupcakes flavors up only for Magical Mystery Review box, box subscribers tomorrow. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Lucky ducks. Okay, now what's happening? Fill me in. I feel like I've missed so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a little cane for Gerald so he can go to the opera. Um, and if you joined us for the uh, winter workshop, you might recognize the technique. It's basically the same overall shape. I may not bead this one because Gerald's already quite fancy. But uh, <laughs> I thought he deserved, you know, just a little, just a little extra. <laughs> I mean, at this stage, she's having a, a better social life than I am, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Gerald goes to the opera. <laughs> Ginger Gerald is off to the opera. But I'm all right, because I'm hanging out here with my girls. Oh, you know it's rosé all day on Thursday? Yes. Am I allowed to have a Grenache or a... I As know, that makes me want to have a glass of rosé. Yeah. Meredith and I were already texting about it yesterday. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> if you all want to know what we're talking about, you have to go over to Jesse James Beads on Facebook and look at events. We have got, we're starting at 1 p.m. Eastern with Jem, and then we're moving on at 2 p.m. with Meredith Roddy from Beadalon. And the theme of the designing day is rosé all day mm -hmm. because these girls are going to be creating easy giftables using rose gold wire from Beadalon and rose gold oh. beads and other items from the rose gold collection at Jesse James. I can't wait. I'll be watching. So I can't wait to see all that goodness. 
I know, Rose Gold. <laughs> I know, I Trish, I know you like that Rose Gold. Look mm -hmm. at the bag, just taps right into it. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, it does. Very romantic. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Something extra sensual about the rose gold metals. <clears throat> and you can see here, guys, I'm, I put in some more wire. And as you go, you can certainly do that. Um, you can start out with a big piece, but to me, it's so much easier to work in smaller increments um, as you go. And then you can just put it right on and you'll never even know the difference. You know, it just is easier. Make life easier on yourselves, basically. <laughs> I was going to ask you that, Trisha, if you like to use smaller pieces or a big hold huge one, because I find it like it can be so tricky when you have a big wire that's just, you know, it depends on the project. But with okay. all the other stuff that's going on on here, it's easier to work with a smaller uh, piece, I find, um, because you have the memory wire that you're fighting back and then you're putting the uh, you have the sorry silk on one side, the wire on the other, you know, so it, it's easier for me in this project to work with. Um, if I have something that's more straightforward, that doesn't maybe have this many loops, I will cut a bigger piece, um, to use that way. But on things like this, that have multiple, uh, things that you're doing with it, I find it easier. Gorgeous. Looks really yeah, beautiful. Absolutely Thank you. gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I love that Stephanie here has all her colors, all of her mm -hmm. spices from the Magical Mystery Bead Box out on her table. Yeah, that's. I'm beautiful. so inspired by all the colors. <laughs> so, so looking so at them makes me. Um, it's just so many ideas of what you can do. They're really pretty. These I love like like tiny beads too. Yeah. Just, like this this to me this box this particular magical mystery bead box was a really good stash builder. Like yeah. good usable beads and a lot of a lot of like the same style of bead. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. From somebody who works. <laughs> primarily with wire having a lot of repeated bead sizes so you could pick out all of these peachy ones from the ginger mix is really really useful because it enables you to do cool things like that so having mm -hmm. this is from the clove mix and um i've decided it's actually uh, an opera monocle now <laughs> it was a before, but now it's an opera monocle okay <laughs> So when you have these repeated sizes, it really opens up a whole different set of design rules that you can play with. And don't yeah. get me wrong, I love the mix and match aspect and I can't wait to open this up and play with these. I adore the, the, the copper tones, the antique tones, they're gorgeous. But this, this is really cool and this always makes me really, really happy to see in a bead mix. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll put my opera monocle away. <laughs> <laughs> So I was just thinking something. I had a funny thought. Since we're working with the sugar and spice mix and we're all girls here, this is like the Spice Girls creative <laughs> song. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> was there one called Wheezy Spice? <laughs> we can all name ourselves the Spice Girls. Oh my god. I do know, know we've got ginger spice up there in the top right corner. <laughs> That's a rumor. I'm blonde. <laughs> I'll take cardamom spice or Himalayan pink spice. Yes. I love that. Himalayan. Himalayan. Pink. Yeah, that's all me right there, too. Cool. <laughs> all right, then I'll take the cardamom spice. <laughs> okay, okay. We're going to, okay. <laughs> Thank I'll, you. That that frees that up then yeah, for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just like have to, hang on a second. These are so cute. Look at them. They they are. Are. They're, They're so wonderful. Teeny, teeny. I love them. There's a lot of beads in here too. I just knocked one out. Like and and mind you, we design all these here, Jesse James beads, Jesse James beads custom product line, but I haven't seen these beads like in a while. Mm -hmm. So, we work very very far in advance on the Magical Mystery bead box. So just like taking these and dumping it out 
I just come to, it like filled my dish up with a couple mm -hmm. layers actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are nice. Yeah. Well, who is it that says that the Jesse James beads are mini mixes or clown car of beads? <laughs> what? <laughs> One of the girls. I can't think of who it was, but Marisol. yeah, yeah, Marisol. yeah, Marisol. <laughs> That's who it was. Yeah, <laughs> the clown car, the clown car of beads. So. That but is the, genuinely hilarious. Yeah, and we're just coming up on the end here too. Out, and then it's so hard to get them back in. You better go. You, you better you pour those beads out. You better use some of them. This is true. <laughs> this is very true. Oh wow, that's hilarious. <laughs> we are coming up on the end here pretty soon. And all I'm going to do in the end is like I did on this end. I was just going to roll loop. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to make, of course, dangles from the dingle dangles, as Meredith says, from from the ends of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think Meredith calls them dangly doos, Trisha. Oh, dangly doos. So mine's dingle dangles. You can call them whatever one. you so please. So wow. I'll be dingle dangles. All right. Yeah. That sounds more like something I would say, dingle dangles. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm not this quite right. So that this works. Is a space where you can call anything that you please. Let yes. there's no wrong answers. Imagine yes. it can stretch us to all the limits. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. How fun. I love it. <clears throat> I'm gonna pop on over here to Miss Stephanie. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, Stephanie. I'm getting done. That is great. So I'm putting the finishing touches and I was just trying to measure to see now, kind of where I'm at. Now, Steph, when you measure, do yeah. you use a ruler or do you just kind of like hold it up and see where you're at? Oh, oh. so you can do either, but I do measure. Okay. <laughs> so I measure from the center of my bead yeah. and then I'm actually over. So I probably need to take this bead off because I, I want it to be 16 inches. And so if you want it to be 16 inches, it's going to go to the eight. But really, you want to go to seven and a half or less, depending on how big your clasp is. So I probably need to just finish with my crystal there um, because I'm right up on the seven and a half. And then that will give me my space for a jump ring and uh, my clasp. So I think I'm about done. And you know what? I forgot to take out a clasp. So 16 inches, Stephanie, is that going to be just about a collar necklace, like sit right at the collar level? Correct. This will sit at the base of the neck, right? Um, yeah, I guess that's the collar. Yeah, right at the base. So. Super cute. Thank you. Oh gosh, that was so much fun to make. And now I'm like, what's next? <laughs> I love it. I just thought that I might add a little bit of bling to the bottom of Gerald's opera cane, just because I can. I mean, it's not like I'm short of crystals, is it? Yeah, it's like you didn't even touch the crystals, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> He's embellished, my friend. Uh-huh. <laughs> serious business. Wow. So I don't know if I'm going to do uh, all the same colorway up his cane, just to give it a little bit more bling for his evening out. <laughs> what kind of opera would you go to see if you had the choice? What's your favorite opera? I actually, I have never been to an opera, Jen. Mm. I really, really want to go. I would like to see Jenny Shiki. Okay. It's one of the slightly lesser popular ones, but it has the most beautiful aria in it called Omeo Babino Caro, Caro, sorry. And I first heard it performed by a Montserrat Caballé, and I urge you to listen to her rendition at some point on your favourite streaming platform, YouTube, um, because she is amazing, absolutely stunning singer. And that's where I think Gerald's going. I think he's off to see Jenny Shiki. With Montserrat Caballé. <laughs> I, okay, what? so I have a furtive imagination. <laughs> yeah. At first, we were giving him noses because, you know, that he could smell himself baking. Now he's going <laughs> very eloquent, that Gerald. <laughs> that Gerald is eloquent. 
English gingerbread man. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't think he's English. I think he's from Boston. Oh. Gerald from Boston. I understand the opera house is quite lovely. <laughs> How does the, a Boston accent go? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, it's specific. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going is, to attempt it. Um, I, I cannot think of the name for the life of me, but what is the name of the opera with, um, gosh, I saw it, The Mask. Oh, he's got the white mask. What is that called again? Okay. Phantom of the Opera. Thank you. I love that one. Yeah, that's where you're going with Gerald then. <laughs> I assume Gerald has a, a private box and probably will be paying, so you might as well. If we're going for Phantom <laughs> of the Opera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun. I'm so enjoying just creating or watch well i'm i'm just watching and enjoying the conversation but this has been really really great to see you girls create and just to have some giggles yes most definitely very enjoyable and fun i always like hanging out with my beady buddies yes. <laughs> this has been wonderful yes wow you girls are amazing <laughs> So what is, um, Trish, you're, I see you're, that you're polishing this off here. Are you just mm -hmm. wrapping the sari around a couple more times at the end to secure it? What's the story? Um, to the basically, yes. Uh, but I've already wrapped the wire around it on the ends. So it's pretty secure. But I, yeah. I like to have, you can have longer pieces, but I like to have just a little bit of a tail on mine just mm. to make it look a little more shabby chic. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it's already wrapped around when you first uh, cast on or when you're casting off, you um, secure it with that wire then. And then you cut the wire and of course you're going to um, squeeze it a little bit just to kind of tighten everything up around. And then as you go, you can just look at your bracelet and if you need to tweak anything, you can just take your pliers in and adjust it. If you don't like where the beads are setting, you can push them with your fingers. If I want mine all on the edge. So I'm kind of just making sure that they're all sitting on the edge because I don't want wow. them being inside the bracelet. So, yeah. That's such a lovely design, Trisha. I, I think Thank you. You, you call it kind of shabby chic, but I think if you were to wear that with an evening gown, it would still really, really work. I think it's quite a versatile piece in that way. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like you could dress it up or dress it down also. And I think with what's kind of making it that way might be the pops of the black in it you know it's making it a little more elegant yeah you know? I, th I think you may be right was sure. it clove that you used i used yes i use cloves um cardamom and himalayan salt gorgeous the really cardamom lovely. are these beads these beads right here are the cardamom like which these, one's the cardamom the like the beigey oh. looking khaki oh. colored yeah. Yeah. So, so yummy. Like so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. We you know, one of the things I love too is that it looks like you mixed. Are you using silver and copper? Um, yes. I'm using I love sil that silver too. spacers and copper wire. Um, oh. I am famous also for mixed metals, so <laughs> I love that. That's something not famous things. by no means, but you know what I mean. I use yeah. it a lot. I do mix metals a lot. I wow. love that Jesse James Beads does that too. They mm -hmm. put a mix of copper and silver and mm -hmm. gold in this in the uh, metal mix that came with the box. Yes. And then each of the little mini mixes has a coordinating um, metal. So the gold, the ginger has gold in it, and then the mm -hmm. silver has, I'm sorry, cardamom has silver in it. The um, pink Himalayan salt has silver. And then the saffron is gold and some brass, darker brass. And then the, I love that the um, clove mix has sort of, it's, it looks like hematite and copper. Yeah, isn't that good? Fabulous. It's fabulous. I'm so glad you like it. <sighs> so wonderful to mix the metals. I love that. I've just yeah, freed the mix and measure collection because uh, you're talking about mixing metals. And one thing that I can't get enough of is when you have a gold 
item but then you also have an antiqued gold and the difference between the two you've got a soft and luscious pure color but then you've got the the low lights when it the item has been um antiqued as well so one of the metal colors that i've worked with for many many years is uh the antique bronze which is this kind of way but when you put that with an antiqued copper it's absolutely fabulous you can't really see the redness on my camera with this particular bead i mean not only is that the most exquisite work of art in and of itself but the mm. color is really unusual and beautiful i tend to work with raw copper a lot in my designs so uh yeah that's a fabulous little collection there which i'm going to be making something delicious with um next week i think potentially it's i can't remember I, I just get told where to go when I turn up. So, <laughs> but I finished really? Gerald, and I've given him his cane, so his oh, eyes are a bit of a wonk. But we won't worry about that. He maybe he's winking. His cane is attached. Oh yeah, we don't want him to lose it after he's had a couple of shabli in his private box at the opera. <laughs> oh my gosh, Gerald is so amazing. I love it. Um, wow. He's living his best life. Oh. Yeah, what a collection. So I've got loads of the Millefiore mix left, the sprinkles. I've still got lots left over from the ginger spice. I haven't even touched cloves, <laughs> Himalayan, cardamom, saffron. That's the ginger one. And then I've still got these as well. So I'm feeling earrings. I think earrings. These are so pretty. So basically with, with Gerald, he's just a wire frame with beads strung onto a lighter wire and then lay it up and he's done. He's happy. He's ready to go out. <laughs> he's so That's excellent. It. He is excellent. Bless your heart. Thank you, darling. I've had such a lovely time with you girls. It's always a riot. I yes. do try to lead you astray. <laughs> it was a blast. I enjoyed it. It's been so amazing. You crack me up, Jen. <laughs> Gerald there. Let's take a quick look here at everyone's projects really quick. We've got Trish with her. <laughs> Whoops, there I put my camera. Sorry. Um, yeah, and I'm just making my my dangle do's. Dickle dangles, whatever. <laughs> dickle dangles. I love it. So pretty. Yep. I'm really liking it. Let's see what it looks like on. Oh yeah. Oh, that's great. So beautiful. That would make a really good gift. That's mm -hmm. gorgeous. It would, and I think I'm gonna put my name on it actually. So that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in my own stocking. Oh yeah. <laughs> you deserve it. Yes. <laughs> yep. And then over here we've got Stephanie. Let's see that necklace held up. Oh, once you're done with your choir. Sorry about that. No, no worries. I'm just, I'm actually, since we're talking and I'm all done with that, I'm making another um, little focal because I think I want to make one out of all three. I'll do one with the red as well. Yes, and I love that we use hardwire to make the focal a little bit of a bar in the middle. Yes, and so we can bend this up so it'll fit the curve of the neck. And then this is my finished um, necklace. And I'm not sure I'll stay. That was a class by head laying out. I forgot to grab a class. I don't know what I was thinking. But this is the finished necklace with okay. the crystal really and pretty. the cup chain and the Millefiori beads. Such a beautiful box. You all did an amazing job. Just yeah. amazing. Thank you so much. I'm really, really glad that you like it. Wow. Yeah. So Thank much fun. You so much for coming out and, and working with the Magical Mystery Bead Box. It's it's, you know, this is something that we love putting together on a monthly basis and seeing your incredible talents and your interpretations and, and what inspired you most out of our monthly box is just such a treat. I can't thank you enough for coming out and taking some time from your day to share your, your talents with us. Oh, thank you, Sarah. I always enjoy it so much. It's so yes, fun. Yes, thank you for having us. And this meeting, has been such a blast. Meeting some new girls and <laughs> some different girls and having a good time. Yeah, we're so lucky to have Jem with us every Thursday. Jem is over at the Jesse James Beads Facebook page. Um, you can also find Jem's videos on the Jesse James YouTube channel and on her own channel, Jem's Gem Box. So it's always so wonderful to see you work with Wire Jem. And it's been so wonderful also to invite 
Trisha and Stephanie to come join us here. Absolutely. As ever, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor to work with the gorgeous, gorgeous box of goodies. November's magical mystery bead box was yeah. an absolute blast, as were you gorgeous people. Thank you. <laughs> you too, yeah, I should say also magical mystery bead box. So we're taking subscribers for the next the next box you can subscribe for is January. If you're not sure what to get a creative person in your life or you want to like drop a hint to someone who knows that you're a creative person in your own life, the Magical Mystery Beat Box is a really awesome gift. And there's a ton of different ways to subscribe. Like you can get the box down to, I think, like $37 a month or something like that if you do for a whole year. Um, but all of that's over at jessejamesbeats.com. You can do your own exploring on on, a, on your own time. This was our monthly create-a-thon where we invite Jesse James Beads ambassadors to come on aboard to make something on the fly, which by the way, is sometimes difficult to do. And <laughs> I have to say, you three just nailed it out of the park. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, so thank you for meeting me, Trisha and Jim. I had so much fun, Sarah. Thank you. you. Hey. Yeah, high five. High five. <laughs> oh no, it's a little way go. How is it going? It's a wave. It's a wave. <laughs> We're not <Yay>. right. <laughs> that must be why we all get along so well. None of us are right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I've like found my tribe with this one here. Well, we'll have to do well, we have to do this where it goes up once and then Jem, you go down and then it keeps going on to Trisha and Sarah. <laughs> Where am I supposed to go? Exactly. There we go. God. <laughs> Next time, maybe we'll have to have some rosé. You know. <laughs> the rosé oh, might help. Man. Ladies, make it worse. That could definitely happen. Kind of I'll tell you what. This is just like something else to be able to get together and to be able to share this space. So for all of our friends who came out on YouTube because the Facebook like, uh, 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 um, thank you for coming over to YouTube and hanging out. Yeah. These girls can be found online on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok even. I know Miss Trisha. So we've got Stephanie Reese here just below me with Maureen Bradley Designs. Let's give it up for Stephanie. Woo! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Indeed, my friend. <laughs> And then just to the left of Stephanie, we have Gem Hawks of Gem, Gem, Gem Box, also with Jesse James Bead, Miss Gem. Yay. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Miss Trisha Geisen of the Pink Poodle mm -hmm. Jewelry Studio. Yay. <laughs> Thanks. Yay. So much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You know. <laughs> and our People wonderful host, Miss Sarah us, James. Right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> it's my pleasure. It is sure. always such a pleasure to hang out with creatives. You three are absolutely amazing. And I cannot thank you enough for all of the love and the energy that you give to Jesse James Beads and our creative community. So once again, thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Bye. holidays, ladies. I'll talk to you soon. I know it. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. Thanks Bye. for joining. Bye, guys.